Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back. I'm here at the pull apart again. I am looking for the wagon that was here last time. I recently changed a clutch for a friend, his name is Isaiah, call him Z. And shortly after changing it, he had issues where he was not able to get into gear anymore and could not shift at all. So I had him check under his his dashboard and look at the pedal assembly and it had it had torn, which is a common problem with our ADH91 Civics and CRXs. So I told him that it'd probably be easier for us to just grab the pedal assembly and install it. And then we could take the old one and have it welded and uh, put a little bit of braces on it while we weld it as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to remove a pedal assembly today because uh, my friend, he doesn't have any experience with cars. And he was looking online, he couldn't find anything that had to do with removing the pedal assembly for our Civics and CRXs. So he was kind of clueless and I told him that on my next day off, let's head over there. I doubt anyone has taken the pedals. We'll get those removed and we'll get them reinstalled onto his car. So let me find the car and I will get back to you guys shortly. The pedal assembly off of that wagon that we're gonna remove. Now you can't remove the pedals unless you drop the entire steering column. To do that, we're gonna have to remove, of course your car is gonna have the plastic cover on here. This one's obviously missing. And same with the cover around the steering wheel itself. Those are easy to remove. There's a couple of screws on the bottom of the plastic cover and then the top piece and bottom piece you can pop off. The plastic cover that's here, you just need to spin both of the little knobs and then you can pull it uh, directly away from there. And then remove this metal piece. There's a 10 millimeter here. Looks like there's another one down over here. And on the opposite side, you have two more as well. These are the three screws you need to remove for the black plastic piece. On the one of the junkyard, it was actually pulled off. So if you remove this back one, it just comes off as one solid piece together. Getting that metal bracket removed. This car already has the two columns removed for the wipers and the blinkers. So you're gonna need to disconnect all this wiring. They're very easy, you just gotta squeeze each clip out. Um, I could possibly show you on his car when we get to his house. And then slide those away because we need to drop this wiring. And then for the ignition switch itself, on the back of it, right in here, you're gonna see, they look like, uh, they're little screws. You can, if you can get a screwdriver in from the opposite side, you can get to it. You can also use a ratchet. I'm not sure of the size. It might be like a seven or eight millimeter. So we need to get that removed. The reason being is we're gonna drop this whole wiring right here. This one will slide out. There's a little clip holding it in right here. We can just slide it this way. And then we can pull this down and we need to get this away from the column because if we don't drop this, it's gonna be hard to drop the entire steering column. Moving the ignition switch, I think you can actually lead in. Just disconnect it right here. I'm gonna try that on his car instead. So I would see if, I think it'll just come down with it. I don't think it'll be in the way, but I did remove it already. But when I got here, I realized I could probably just disconnect it there. So we're gonna try that out and see if that uh, gives me the room. Um, yeah, cause once I pull these out of the way, I should be able to. And these are those four wires that are connected to the windshield wiper stock and also the, the turn signal stock. If you just put a screwdriver in here, you can kind of pry each clip, push it in, and then push it back, and you'll get them all removed. Now this one on the front here, that one's very easy, so go ahead and remove that one as well. Now when removing the throttle cable and the clutch cable, once I pull the pedal assembly, I'll show you how to remove those, because I cannot get any sort of video of them uh, as it's connected. Remove the column cover. It has these two metal rings around it. You can just kind of pull these away. Obviously, if you're salvaging on your car, back in here, right there where my finger is, little plastic nuts, and these are both 10 millimeter. You can spin them loose. And on the bottom, right here where it's shiny, there is a little clip. That one's like a push clip that just slides into the chassis. But once you pull it down, you have the two nuts removed, you'll be able to, to slide it out of the way. You don't need to remove it entirely. Once we drop the column itself, and we'll have more than enough room to get in there. On the bottom side, we need to remove a handful of 
handful of 12 millimeter bolts. You have these two golden ones on each side of the column. And you have these two nuts, which are on the sides as well, which are holding the bracket. So remove those two. And then also down here, around this little bracket, you have another one on this side. And this little plastic cover is on top of the other one, but we can pry that away. And we're gonna remove those. So we need to remove all six of those. Stain on there. Okay, so go ahead and just disconnect this right here, squeeze that pin and slide it out, and then we should be able to drop it. He's having trouble getting off. It actually just unbolts, it's just it was getting stuck on the edge, so he didn't need to disconnect it there. He probably could have just pulled it straight down and then slid it away. But regardless, we've got the steering column dropped now. Now it looks like we're gonna need to disconnect. We're gonna do the clutch cable and also the throttle cable, but I'll show you those in a different segment. Now when you're taking off the throttle cable, all you gotta do is pull on this side. There's a little clip that goes in. You just pull on this side and you can pull it loose. And for the clutch cable on top here, it's like a little hook. All you gotta do is, uh, you, of course you're gonna to have to loosen your clutch cable from the, the transmission itself and then it gives you the slack. This one you just pull it away and uh, you can slide it right over it. Now we're gonna remove it. We're gonna go ahead and drop the fuse box next just to give us a little more room in case we need it. And that is just a 10 millimeter right here and also a 10 millimeter on the opposite side. We did pull the fuse box away to give us a little more room. Might be, make it a little easier overall. Now we're gonna disconnect. This is the brake light switch. So if your brake lights are ever having problems not staying on, sometimes check the little pin behind it. But this, you can just squeeze the top. And we're gonna slide that clip. So it's it's up in here. You can kind of just pull at it, pull to the side. And let me see, we might have to remove the brake switch itself. And it's, it's pliable enough to just get it around. And we pulled it out. It's just this tube right here. That'll give us enough room to get some of those top bolts. There's another tube in here as well that looks like we're going to leave that one alone. I don't think we'll need to get to it because there's a bolt on top we need to get to. Okay. You're down here, go ahead and remove. Is This is a, the clutch switch for when you start your vehicle. This is what allows you to start it when you push your clutch. And just go ahead and remove that also because you are going to need to remove from the assembly. Now we're going to get the clevis pin removed and that's for the the brake booster attaching to the brake pedal. If you look right in here, you'll see a little pin. There's a, it has a cotter pin in it that you need to remove. The clevis pin slides directly out. I'll show you that once we have it as, out of the pedal assembly itself. We're gonna remove this bracket, which is just a 12 millimeter bolt on this opposite side. And that clevis pin is what slid right in here. That slid off of the the brake master cylinder on that little uh, clip there and it looks exactly like that so you just need to pull the cotter pin away from it and then you can push the clevis pin right out We're ready to actually remove the assembly we have everything removed and you have a handful of nuts that are holding the assembly on if i recall correctly it looks like there is seven you have the first one right here that's next to the, the gas pedal and you have four surrounding. These actually connect to the brake booster. So there's one, two, on the top side, I can't even show you, there's three and four. And then above the clutch pedal, there's one more right in there. And then the last one, if you go up underneath, you'll see it right there. There's also a 12 millimeter, millimeter. So get all seven of those removed and we should be able to wiggle the assembly out. There we go. Yep. Yep. Or yeah, I am already. Oh, go ahead and drop. <laughs> yeah, you can drop. And if you go forward, drop it down a little bit. Get around the... There we go, ladies and gentlemen. We got it out. Now he's just going to wiggle it out. And we'll show you exactly how the clutch and the throttle cable are attached. It's catching right there on top of that bracket. There you go. And then 
that's why you have to drop the call and do it. Kind of pain in the butt. Sweet. Pedals. You can see how they're obviously clutch pedal has fallen to the left a little bit as the upper bracket has it's torn. I'll show it to you when we get the pedals removed. Assemblies side by side. This is his old one that we just removed. You can see where it has torn. It pulls and then it pulls the pedal away from the other pedals and that's why you can no longer get into gear. It's not the it's not pulling the clutch the clutch cable far enough to actually I disengage the clutch so you can get it in gear. So and that's exactly what happens. A lot of people will put like a little support brace here, get it welded back together and put some support. But we're just gonna uh, change it for now. And then this one we're gonna probably have welded up just as a replacement in case we ever need it in the future. It was just the, the reversal of removal. It's really not as difficult. Hardest part is sliding the gas pedal back around the steering column and then getting it in there. But other than that, it was a straightforward process and it is working perfectly again. Hope this helped you guys out. Thanks for watching. You were here and we're taking out, well he's working on the column still. And I'm just chilling here in the passenger seat and I found this, check this out. It was, cars from Washington State, well at least it was up there recently. Some dude, some poor guy by the name of, obviously Jonathan, but they, maybe it was Jothan, however they spell it. <laughs> January 7th, 2015, three years ago. Check this out. Spark plugs, 35. Spark plug wire set, premium, 87. Valve cover gasket, 66. A brand new distributor. Yeah, it should go. Oh, there's, there's those ones underneath. On that little metal oh, bracket. Yeah, yeah, get those two removed. The fuel filter, $26. And check out those labor charges. This is labor description. $105 just to change spark plug wires and $140. They make $240 off 10 minutes of work. And then another, what, spark plugs take another 10 minutes. Valve cover gasket, another 15 minutes. This fool spent $1,170.58 for just these random ass parts that I would help a friend do for free. I wouldn't even charge him for this easy ass shit. But it's pretty interesting seeing it. And we just both got a kick out of that. 1,000, yep. Poor dude. Oh, here we go. Save $10 off of your repair. Wow. <laughs> we were sitting here just uh, looking at the car and checking it out. And I was like, look at this window tint job. They like, obviously combined <laughs> two pieces. And it's, it's just really, really sad. It's unfortunate. But I guess that's the way it's done sometimes. <laughs> And guys, if you liked any of the music that I used in this video, all of it was made by Z Beats, he's the guy who owns the wagon. Go ahead and check out his SoundCloud page. He has all of his songs available for free download, and he'd love for you guys to download them and use them and listen to them. Thanks for the support, guys. We'll see you next time.